his wife and say that uh, th these are sexist, uh, anti-women statements that show that the local churches and their view of women uh, is very low. And you know what? Uh, I won't argue against that. I won't argue against that. Uh, that may be true to some extent. Uh, but I believe that Ron Kangas's statements about his wife go beyond having merely a low view of women. I believe it goes even further and deeper than that. I believe that Ron Kangas' statements about his wife highlight, they highlight, not necessarily an issue against women, but actually they highlight an even worse issue that I found personally in the local church's cult, and I know that many others have found in the local church's cult. And that is the issue of dehumanization. Ron Kanga's statement about his wife highlight the issue of dehumanization and the dehumanization that occurs in the local church's cult. Ron Kanga's statements about his wife highlight the deep-rooted, the deep-rooted dehumanization that occurs when you're steeped in the teachings of Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. Now, the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And uh, I don't know if Ron was planning on calling his wife nothing and no one in his message. I don't know if he planned on saying that. But regardless, it came out of his mouth. And uh, you know what? It came out of his mouth. He said it. And uh, he spoke from the heart. I don't know if he was saying those things purposefully to hurt his wife. I don't think he was doing that. But he spoke. He said what he said. And he was speaking from his heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you know, Ron King has spoke something that I would say uh, very few husbands would ever dare say about their wives, especially publicly. He spoke something that publicly belittled and dehumanized his wife, but his doing that, I believe, is merely a symptom. It is merely a small outward manifestation of the rampant dehumanization that occurs in Witness Lee's ministry, in his trainings, and in his churches. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of what I and many others have seen as a dehumanization in the local church's cult. There are many, many examples. I'm just going to address maybe three for now, for the sake of time. The first one that I'm going to address is the dehumanizing effect that the local church's cult ministry has in that it often it often alienates and isolates new members away from their own families. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3 says, In the end times, there will be those among us who will be without natural affection. Without natural affection. This is a very important phrase. Of course, the way that Paul writes this verse it makes it very clear that natural affection is something that is basic, it is good, it is normal, and that the wicked people are lacking in natural affection. They suppress their God-given natural affection. And, uh, you know, if you're without natural affection, you're wicked. You're wicked. And uh, the Bible says also in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, that these are perilous times. So in these perilous times, which I believe are today, there will be people without natural affection. And I would like to note that Witness Lee, interestingly enough, Witness Lee spoke many, many times, many, many times against natural affection. He condemned natural affection as low, as superficial compared to his special elitist form of phony spirituality. 
He was very much against natural affection, even though the Holy Bible makes it very clear that natural affection is something good. It is given from God, and we should have it. We should have it. As I have said before, the rotten fruit, there's a lot of rotten fruit in the local churches, and the rotten fruit of the local churches is the all too often alienating and isolating of members away from their families, occupying them, occupying their time with meeting after meeting, with conference after conference, with training after training to the neglect of their own families, calling them away to conferences and trainings that are oftentimes very purposefully scheduled during holidays when most normal people would be spending times with their families and their relatives. Many, many people have witnessed, have witnessed their beloved family members who joined the local church's cult just slowly and slowly drift away and change into a strange, abnormal version of themselves. That, sorry to say, happened to me for quite some time, and it's happened to many, many others. It is unnatural. It is abnormal. It is inhuman to be alienated and estranged from your family in such a way. It is to act as if you weren't a normal human being. And this is one of the dehumanizing effects that the local church's cult has upon their members, just like many other cults. It isolates you, alienates you oftentimes from your family. That is not normal. That is abnormal. And that is wrong. We should be full of natural affection towards our family. And we should not be uh, shunning members of our family because of some cult we belong to. So the second, the second uh, example of dehumanizing that I'm going to talk about is the dehumanization that occurs in the so-called Bible school of the local church's cult, which is called the full-time training. In the United States, there's a full-time training at Anaheim. Now there's a new one, kind of like a post-grad, post-post-grad one. That's, uh, I believe it's in Boston. And uh, there, there are many dehumanizing rules and regulations that they will impose upon you, rules and regulations that are not in the Bible, that deprive people of their proper individuality, of their family, contact with their family, and uh, deprive them of their personal convictions. They suppress their personal convictions. Students who attend this cult, so-called Bible school will be subject to many random uh, arbitrary rules treating these students who are adults, by the way, treating these adults as if they were little kindergartners, as, as if they were little kids, telling them rules like, you can't chew gum. Yes, that is actually a rule in the full-time training in Anaheim. No chewing gum. Are you serious? Who the heck are you to tell any adult that they can't chew gum at their leisure? What kind of rule is that? That is so ridiculous. Where is that in the Bible? It's against the, the rules also in the full-time training to wear jeans, even for men to wear jeans. Where is that rule in the Bible? Who in the heck are you to tell me that I can't wear jeans? Absolutely ridiculous. A very, uh, a very strange rule that they have is uh, they forbid, they limit your contact with your own family to only once a week while you're in the training. Only once a week and no more. Do you see the isolation from your family here? Do you see how this trains people to make them void of any natural affection? These are just a few of the dozens of dozens of strange, goofy, dumb rules in the full-time training that they impose upon the students, robbing them, robbing them of their humanity, of their freedom to eat and uh, uh, chew what they want, uh, robbing them uh, of their humanity, telling them they can't wear what they want, or even maintain a close relationship with their own family members. That is what cults do. That is ridiculous. 
you know, to lord it over people in such